What up fam? Welcome back to 88-Bit Tech. I'm AJ and today we are doing a visual comparison of the official FSR3 implementation in the game with frame generation to the FSR 3.1 frame generation mod. We are going to be comparing the upscaling methods of FSR3 versus DLSS, XCSS, and FSR 2.1, as well as the accompanied 3.1 frame generation mod. We are testing these settings on my main rig, which is rocking an RTX 3060 Ti that is undervolted and slightly overclocked, paired with a Ryzen 7 5800X, 32 gigabytes of CL18 3600 megatransfers per second running in dual channel, and we are playing Cyberpunk 2077 off of a 2 terabyte KingFast 2.5 inch SATA SSD. We are also running the latest NVIDIA drivers, and without further ado, let's get into the settings. We are running it in windowed borderless mode at 1440p. And the reason for that is if you're using the official implementation of FSR3 with frame generation, you can only do so in windowed borderless. It disables full, the full screen option. So you'll see here in a second. Yep. So we've got FSR3 selected set to quality and FSR3 frame generation enabled. This was the this was added in the most recent 2.13 patch and we have it on the ultra preset with some of the basic basic settings shut off. So we we'll see field of view is 100 and everything else in basic is set to off, but the rest of it is the ultra preset. And as you can see, we're already getting some terrible visual artifacting on the screen. It's not looking good for FSR3. So let's get straight into the comparison. So now in this video here, we have the FSR3.1 frame gen mod that I got off of Nexus. I am using a NVIDIA card, so I don't need to use FSR3.1. However, if you have a AMD card, you can fake an NVIDIA GPU You'll be able to select DLSS, however, it'll be FSR 3.1. And I have DLSS set to quality with DLSS frame generation, which is FSR 3.1 frame generation. And I also do have the anti-ghosting mod and vignette remover mod installed for a better visual experience with the frame generation and the upscaling. And the rest of the settings are the same. So ultra presets with those basic settings turned off. And we're running 1440p. However, the added benefit of the FSR 3.1 mod is that you can use it in full screen mode. If you're using the FSR 3.1 frame generation, you can also use that on any of the upscalers. That's the real big negative with the official implementation of FSR 3 frame generation is it can only be used with the FSR 3 upscaler, which really sucks because I'm going to show you here, spoiler alert, it is the worst upscaler out of all the options that you can choose from. All right, so we're going to go to that full screen, apply that back in the game and already left side is always going to have the, the official FSR3 implementation at quality settings and the right side is going is what we're comparing it against. I do have some of the FPS numbers in the top left corner. This is not a performance review. However, I will say that you're going to see some frame time graphs that are a bit inconsistent with the official implementation, but that is because I have OBS Studio running and OBS Studio, at least when it comes to the official impl implementation of FSR3, really messes with the frame time. Without it running, it is, smooth, it is a smooth frame time graph for all the upscalers. Also, OBS does take a pretty big hit to our FPS. It's about 4%. So tack on 4% more to the FPS that you're seeing. But like I said, this is not a, a performance overview. It, it is a visual review of the upscalers. DLSS, it is the superior upscaler. You're getting a much more stable image with a lot less shimmering and art uh, visual, visual artifacts. 
Now we're going to move on to FSR 2.1 here. And this is an interesting tidbit. FSR 2.1 is natively in the game. It's been in the game for quite some time. And we're using it with the uh, 3.1 frame generation mod. Now, you won't be able to really see the, the frame gen here until we get moving. But more importantly, visually, we have much more visual clarity in 2.1 than in FSR 3. And less shimmering overall. You can see it towards the back in the diner there. It's just more stable. Now moving on to XESS. XESS has another option. There's a lower upscaling option and it's XESS Ultra Quality, which is a bit higher. I think it's around like an it's upscaling from about like 80% render resolution. We are going to get a better image uh, out of this as well. However, another thing you're going to see is we also have a more stable image. It's very, it's very close to DLSS quality. It's really stable overall. So we're going to take a, a, a deeper look at the difference in the images here. I am the same distance away from the bike because I just load in. And you're going to see here the visual differences much closer. Now first up we have, we're comparing the official and the DLSS quality here. You can see on the right hand side it looks there. Sharper overall, less muddy than what we get in the official. Let's compare that the XESS. Remember, we are upscaling from a higher image, so we're going to get better visuals here as well. But you're going to notice that the FPS is actually quite like, around the same too as well. And yes, more visual clarity here on the right side versus the left. XESS has a better image quality. Now, here's the surprising bit. We're going to take a look at FSR 2.1. This is built into Cyberpunk already and we're comparing it to the latest patch of FSR 3. It is very clearly much more detailed on the image on the right than it is on the left. FSR 2.1 has better image quality than FSR 3. I have no way of verifying this, but I think FSR 3 is using an older version of FSR to upscale with. And that's why it's worse overall. And it's not just in image clarity. It's also in stability of the image as well. Let's take a look at the actual frame generation components of the image here. So we've got, I'm not sure if the FSR, if, if the anti-ghosting mod affects the official implementation of frame generation, but I don't think it does. Frame 
second generation. So this is where the biggest difference, we're going to see the biggest difference in the foliage. We're in ultra settings and on a still image it looks completely fine. However, the official implementation is just so shimmery. You just do not get a stable image at all. Obviously with the LSS we're fairly stable. For the most part, we're not getting any, uh, very little or next to no, no shimmering grass. FSR 2.1. This is going to be an interesting comparison. So with FSR 2.1, we still get shimmering. We still get a uh, not so stable image. There's going to be some um, visual artifacts here. However, it's a lot less abrasive than the official implementation. And this last bit here is, even though I said I wasn't going to do a performance overview, this is a bit of a performance overview of the official implementation of FSR3 quality with their official implementation of frame generation and DLSS quality with the FSR3.1 frame generation mod. And I have money. Just begun. I've already done a, a, a drive around the city. <laughs> So it was about a 10 minute run that I played for each of these and with the official implementation of FSR3 we got an average of 76 FPS with a 1% low of 31. Keep in mind getting about a 4% hit because of OBS and with the FSR3.1 frame generation mod we're getting 82 frames per second and 47 FPS in the 1% lows. And remember this is also taking a 4% hit due to OBS. That is a 7% increase to the average FPS with the FSR 3.1 mod and better visuals. And for the 1% lows, it's a 51% increase. So you're getting a smoother experience with the mod as well. So to summarize, the, the official implementation of FSR 3 to Cyberpunk with included frame gen is a huge L in my book. Literally every upscaling method in the game is better, even the already outdated FSR 2.1 that's already built into the game is better is a better upscaler than the FSR 3 upscaler. I imagine if you have an AMD card and you run the FSR 3.1 mod you can fake an NVIDIA card. It turns DLSS upscaling into FSR 3.1. I'm sure that will be also infinitely better than this FSR 3 implementation that this official one that CD Projekt Red has put out. It's it's terrible it's not good do yourself a favor, download the mod. It's free, guys, on Nexus Mods. It's free, it's fairly simple. Get Vortex. You can install it through Vortex and it makes it even easier. You don't have to drag and drop or anything. You can just click Vortex download option and it'll do it for you. You'll have a way more enjoyable experience, better visual fidelity, smoother gameplay, and I should mention that as far as input latency goes, I do frequently use uh, lost the scaling frame generation in some other games and I only use the X2 mode because of the input latency that I feel is bearable when it's on uh, when it's on X2 mode. I did not experience any noticeable input latency in any of the upscalers including the, the official implementation of FSR 3 frame generation. So I guess that's a bonus for it. At least the input lag isn't bad. I guess it's good if you're on console and you don't have the access to implement these mods then you can get more frames out of it but you'll get more frames it'll just look terrible anyway guys if you have any questions please feel free to leave them in the comments below and i'll try to answer them as quickly as i can thank you for tuning in and i'll catch you guys in the next one peace